This is a presentation on arthroscopic management of a bony Bankart lesion. I'm uh, Dr. James Chen from San Francisco. So I have a case here. This is a 43-year-old male computer programmer. He's right-hand dominant. He had a fall downstairs, suffered a right shoulder dislocation that was reduced in the ED, presented to me seven days post-injury, and I obtained a CT scan. Here are the uh, injury CT scan. You can see the axial view. There's a large bony Bankart fragment, approximately one-third to one-half of the area. You can see on the coronal view uh, from superior to inferior, approximately one-third of the glenoid is fractured. And then on the sagittal view, this is a really nice view to see that this is a, a fragment that's approximately one-third to a half of the area uh, in the classic position in the anterior inferior uh, quadrant of the glenoid, and the 3D reconstruction clearly shows that. So I discussed treatment options with the patient. Uh, Non-surgical versus surgical treatment was discussed. Uh, we reviewed the imaging. Uh, I counseled him that greater than one-third of the glenoid was involved. Uh, given his age and activity level and his high risk of recurrent instability, uh, he opted for surgical treatment. Uh, we discussed open versus an arthroscopic approach. I uh, consensus him for an arthroscopic procedure uh, with a possible open. And so uh, positioning, this is a beach chair position. A standard arthroscopic posterior portal is made. A uh, low anterior portal is made at the superior border of the subscapularis. And a high anterior portal is made at the tie and lateral in the rotator interval to help with fracture reduction. Typically, uh, if the fragment is one-third of the glenoid or larger, um, I uh, believe that screw fixation is going to be the best treatment and I believe the standard should be uh, two screws. If it's a real small just sliver uh, of bone that's taken with the labrum, then a standard soft tissue Bankart labral repair is done. If it's between a sliver and uh, a one-third uh, fragment, then usually I would do a bridging uh, sandwich technique with multiple anchors. So here are some intraoperative images. This is a diagnostic arthroscopy portion of the case, and you can see the large anterior inferior bony fragment. I have some video here of mobilizing the fracture, and I've placed a uh, liberator elevator in between the fracture site. And what you really want to do here is mobilize that fracture and make sure it's completely loose. Um, if it's partially attached, you want to detach it so that you can get an anatomic reduction and really mobilize it. So you really want to get in there and, and not be fearful that you're going to fracture it further and make sure there's good separation. Here are some images showing the mobilization. I'm looking down that uh, high anterior lateral portal right into the fracture site. I have a shaver there. I want to remove all clot and debris and any little comminution. So it's a totally free fragment. And then here's a fragment reduction. I've used a curved suture lasso. I like using the suture lasso because it has a sharp pointed end. And so you can kind of spear and pin the fracture fragment in place. And you can see here I have an anatomic sort of provisional reduction just with the suture lasso. And here's the image of uh, the, the fragment fixation. So uh, I've placed one uh, suture in the anterior inf inferior labrum to remove the labrum out of the way uh, so I can visualize better. Then I have that suture lasso in place, have it pinned, and then I put two K-wires. Uh, these uh, portals and K-wires are placed percutaneously um, using needle localization. And the glenoid set, or the uh, glenoid bone loss set, has a very long nesting guide uh, that's perked for this. Um, so all these uh, portals are placed uh, percutaneously uh, with needle localization using that long nesting guide. And here's some videos showing uh, cannulated drilling by hand. I have that freer elevator in place. I'm using it to retract soft tissue. And then I'm gently uh, drilling uh, over the K-wire so as not to shift or disrupt the fracture. And then here's some video of actual screw placement. I've retracted that soft tissue with the free elevator. Uh, then I'm coming in by hand and gently putting that cannulated screw in, which is a 3.75 uh, cannulated screw. I've left uh, the other pin in place while doing this um, so as not to disrupt the fracture when putting the screw in. And here's a picture of the final fr fracture fixation. You can see this is anatomic reduction. The screw heads are slightly countersunk. And then I perform a soft tissue bank art repair and a capsule shift for additional stabilization to cover the screw heads. And so you can see two racking hitch sutures placed here, and I'm going to cover the screw heads. And then you can see me uh, drilling the pilot hole for the push locks. And here's the final fracture and soft tissue bank art repair. So it's an anatomic reduction, and there's no screw head prominence, and the capsule and labrum have been shifted. And for this patient, I got post-surgical imaging. Here's a CT scan, and you can see on the right, there's an anatomic reduction of that glenoid. And then you can see the screw trajectory. Typically, the screw trajectory is going to be from lateral to medial, more than anterior to posterior, and you can see that uh, in the CT scan. 
So what are some technical pearls? Well, you want to take care not to traumatize the soft tissue bank heart while working on that bony fracture. Uh, I use the analogy of a golf ball on a golf tee, and you want, to, you want to make sure you reduce the fracture, but you also have to keep that labrum intact so you can uh, create a deeper socket. I use traction sutures initially in the labrum to pull it out of the way while I do the bony work. Uh, and then I use that sharp suture lasso to pin the fracture in place while placing provisional K-wire fixation. It's important to do cannulated drilling by hand, not to disrupt the fracture. And then the screws are placed more lateral to medial than anterior to posterior. And then I perform the capsule labral repair after screw placement to cover the screw heads. My preference card is the bony bank cart set or the glenoid bone loss set. It's got K-wires, it's got a very long nesting drill guide that can be used as a skid to place uh, those uh, portals and then the 3.75 cantilated screws. Uh, the standard arthroscopic instruments I have available are that sharp suture lasso to pin the fracture in place, as well as the 2.9 push locks. Thank you very much.